Hi everyone, King Edgy here bringing you another Gen 1 video. In this one, we are taking the Edgy Challenge. Let's go. Going up against our good friend Roy here. And just so you remember, here's how the Edgy Challenge works. You get three games against me, King Edgy. If you win all three, you've dethroned me. I'm no longer a king. If you lose all three, you're banished. You can never take the challenge again. And anywhere in between, you'll either survive and get to challenge another day, or I'll knight you. I'll give you a kingdom, some land for yourself and your friends. So here we go against Roy. Our team doesn't look great, but it maybe doesn't look terrible either. Um, we don't really have anything particularly good for this mime other than Hypno, so we're just going to go Hypno hoping he psychics. Great. Uh, and there we kind of thought, you know, usually good players will use Thunder Wave there, saying, okay, he's going to switch out, but really good players will use Psychic there because they're like, okay, well, he'd expect me to switch out, so maybe he's going ground type, right? So I could have gone Marowak there feeling like, oh, he'll go Thunder Wave, and then, whew, I'm in a world of hurt. But we're just going Hypno, and Hypno loves hypnotizing folks, right? So there we go. Big Hypnosis right out the gate. And what do we do now? I don't know what comes in against Hypno, what feels good about doing that. So I guess I'll just go Pidgeotto, knowing that it could damage this Mr. Mime pretty effectively with some double edges. And, you know, as a personal note, gotta love double edge, right? I'm King Edgy. This is my signature move, double edge. So let's see how Roy responds. The fact that he's taking a little bit makes me think he might not have a ghost type. He might not have a rock ground type. He's got a Grimer. I don't really care about Grimer that much. Um, so I guess I'll just trade. Just a nice trade. Grimer for Pidgeotto. Unless we get a critical hit or he doesn't explode first turn, which he doesn't. We could do a cheeky thing here in Gen, in gen 1. Uh, if you use Substitute and then they explode into it, um, their sprite disappears, but they don't faint, which is pretty funny. So uh, I'm not going to show you, though, because I'm kind of worried about him not exploding. Uh, again, like I said earlier, sometimes the really great players figure out what's the optimal move that my opponent would expect, and then I'll do the real optimal move, right? So if, for instance, I had a ghost type or a rock ground type, I would switch it in here to eat this explosion. I don't have either of those, so I don't even really have to think too much about it, but Roy does go for the explosion and gets us. Okay. Who's going to come out next for Roy? I don't know. I've already revealed Nidoran, so I'm going to just put him out there and see what he can do. And maybe we'll hope for a nice little body slam paralysis or something like that. Oh, we've got Pidget. Mama Bird here. That's pretty good for us, because we have some super effective moves against it. It does two-shot us with the combination of double-edge hyper beam. So he might decide to stay in, eat this blizzard, and then see. But <clears throat> we're just going to go blizzard here. Uh, if he does decide to switch out, no problem. We'll just freeze whoever he switches out into. If he decides to stay in, we'll hope for a crit or a freeze or something like that. But let's see what Roy decides to do here. Again, he probably has the same information that we have. He doesn't think, oh yeah, he doesn't think that we have a, um, a ghost or rock type based on his Grimer play. So he kind of knows what's going on. And there, a uh, solid play from Roy. Now, I feel like the obvious play is to switch into Hypno. So I expect his Jinx to go for Blizzard or Psychic or something like that. I'm going to stay in and Body Slam. Even if he does decide to go Lovely Kiss here, I'm not too worried about it. 
Pony Tau one shots him from this range, but if we can get the Body Slam Para, I'm I'm feeling excited by that. Okay, so he gets <laughs> he gets the critical hit. Okay, cool, cool stuff. Unfortunate. Um because we had the right read, he wasn't going for Lovely Kiss, but I guess we got a little too risky there with the hope of a Body Slam Paralysis. And this is an important matchup here because other than Ponyta, we don't have anyone with any speed on our whole team. So we really need this Pony to do some good work, in particular against this Jinx, because Hypno can't really take it out, and as soon as Hypno rests up, uh, it can be put to sleep, so we don't want to let that happen. So the Mime comes out, which I gotta say, that's an interesting choice to me, because if he lets the Mime go down, Hypno can put something else to sleep. That would be really nice. Um, but he must be confident that that won't happen, so let's see who he's got in the back here. He's got Poliwhirl in the back. Um, I guess this is why he was confident. He thought, well, Poliwhirl can amnesia up and then knock out Hypno, right? That must be his thought here. So I guess we're going to stay in Body Slam once. Could the amnesia happen? And then we're going to have to switch out. I'm going to have to check a few things here. Whoops. Ah, I'm in, I'm in Gen 8 again. Sorry. Um, I was like, where's Poliwhirl? Okay, there he is. Uh, going against Shelder at plus two special. Okay, so we're kind of hopeful that this can work out for us. But let me just check Hypno real quick. Again, okay, but it does 35 to 41, so Hypno is in, not quite in range. Um, so let's see what happens here. It goes Surf. We still don't know if this Poliwhirl is Hypnosis Poliwhirl or not. Um, so this is a big turn, this explosion. It is Hypnosis Poliwhirl and he misses. Incredible. Really, really, really lucky for us. Uh, and now I guess we're in this situation of we know two of his last three. We know Ponyta handles them both. We don't know his third and final Pokemon. Um, so what do we do? Do we go Ponyta knowing he has um, kind of Ponyta has the advantage? I think we go Hypno here. It's a, kind of a middle ground play. If he brings out his third Pokemon... Um, Hypno might be able to put it to sleep or do something else. If he brings out one of his other two, again, Hypno could put it to sleep or just or just chip away at them. But, yeah, here we go. 251. It's faster than Ponyta, but I think Ponyta Marowak can take this home. So, I guess I'll Hypnosis. Great, great. That was good. That was really good. Uh, I'm just going to stay in and Psychic now. And to me, that move makes the most sense. Uh, if he decides to switch out, no problem. If he decides to stay in, we'll just chip down this Jinx a little bit. Okay. I'm going to switch out to Ponyta here, actually. Um, I guess I... Uh, I don't know. I don't know if that was the right move or not, but I liked it because I guess I should have switched him out a turn earlier. I don't know why I didn't. I don't know why I stayed in psychic there. I thought it was safer. Does Ponyta's Fire Blast make sense here? Um... Ponyta's Body Slam does half to Jinx, so if I do a little bit more damage to Jinx, 
then we'll be able to knock it out. So I think I think the right play is to switch out. Oh, okay, he missed anyway, but clearly that was the right play there. Um, we just need slightly more damage to come off of this Jinx, and then we should be okay. Great. So Jinx is now definitely in body slam range for the Ponyta. So that play, um, although it was maybe not... Okay, what, what am I doing now? Um, yeah, I, I made that mistake of, of not going first turn into Ponyta, for sure. Um, now I kind of have to think a little bit about this end game. Hypno could potentially stay in and, and just knock this Jinx out with Psychics. Um, so I guess that's what I'll try for. He gets the crit. Okay. But that's fine. Pony talk can come in now. But now it's now it's tough because Doug Trio comes out now, right? And we switch to Marowak. He gets the Earthquake off, which does a lot of damage. We go for Blizzard. I think um, Doug Trio. Blizzard does over half. Body Slam plus Blizzard doesn't pick out pick up the KO. Pidget Blizzard is a three shot. We need this Marowak for Doug Trio, like for sure. So if he does switch out here, um, we'll have to switch out, and we could fall victim to his double switch. Like if he goes Pidget here and then goes straight back to Doug Trio, we might be in some trouble because I don't know if Ponyta um, can handle Doug Trio at all unless some damage is on it. And if some damage is on it, then it could handle it, but it probably can't handle both Doug Trio and Pidget. Actually... Ponyta, if Ponyta reflects, Pidget can only do 30% without a crit. Okay. Doug Trio, dead Ponyta. Uh, and Doug Trio, okay, so it could still knock us out through that reflect even without a crit. So let's see what happens here. He does go Pidget. Now we really have to think if he's going to double switch or not. Do we care? Does it matter? I don't know if it matters. We need this Marowak. 28% is what Earthquake just did to the Marowak. And Pidget does 47 maximum. So Pidget could knock me into range for, for Doug Trio. Um, but I think I have to switch. And he might double and get me real good. But if he does double... I can always go back to Marowak, and I could pull it out with some it, with a body slam paralysis, I think. So it's closer than I want it to be because I messed up big time in, in not switching out to Ponyta when I put Jinx to sleep. Um, again, I don't know why I thought that was the right move. Oh, that was a big critical hit. Um... That was, that was a big critical hit. Uh, so I think we go Fire Blast here. If Doug Trio comes out, we do a ton of damage to it. 
and potentially burn it, which I think would seal the game. If he doesn't come out, we just knock out this Pidget. I'm pretty sure. Yep. So, decision time for Roy once again. I'm glad he didn't double, but the damage on that double edge, whew, that was real. That was some real damage. Um, yeah, but we got this Fire Blast, and then as long as we don't take a critical hit from Earthquake, uh, Marowak should be good to clean it up. I think two Earthquakes from Marowak to Doug Trio. Yeah, get the job done. So we just Earthquake, Earthquake. Mm -hmm. So let's see what Roy decides to do. Is he going to stay in or potentially risk Doug Trio getting burned? That is the question here. I guess as I think more about it, if Doug Trio comes out right now, doesn't get burned, do we just let Ponyta go down? How much does Pidget's Hyper Beam do to Marowak? 39 to 47. Okay, and the Doug Trio's Earthquake, 25 to 29. So there's a decent chance, yeah. Uh, we got the crit, okay. So it doesn't matter, because um, we got that crit. We should be good now. But, yeah, I think we would have let Ponyta go down if we didn't get the crit. But we get it. Ponyta never misses. We get pretty lucky after misplaying hard on that, on that uh, hypnosis. Because that would have pretty much ended it, I think, um, if we still had Hypno in the back. But there's game one. We got super lucky that Poliwhirl missed his hypnosis, and then we hit ours. So um, really very lucky there. And here we go. Edgy challenge round two. We have not been dethroned, so that always feels good. Get that first win out of the way. And now we'll see what... Roy has to say about trying to gain some land within the kingdom or get banished. Um, we'll see which path he takes. This is like a nightmare matchup for us at the start. Cloyster versus Magneton. We are slower and get one hit KO'd. Um, and then, the, you know, I always think about this. I always think about if I have a Magneton, do I just switch it out immediately and expect a ground type to come out? Because how many ground types are there in the game? There's Sandshrew Sandslash, Marowak Cubone, there's Rhyhorn Rhydon, Geodude Graveler Golem, um, Onyx. Am I missing anybody? I might even be missing somebody, but, but there's those... 10 at least and so 10 out of 151 what do you figure it's like 10 out of 150 so it's 1 out of 15 6 percent chance that you have that you get a ground type but then the chance that you get no ground type would be 94 percent so if you did 0.94 to the sixth power it's 68. Oh, wow. Okay. So there's only like a 68% chance that you don't have a ground type for any of your Pokemon. Huh. I thought it would be lower. All right. I'm going to switch. Yeah. <laughs> I just do all that and then immediately switch out because uh, I'm foolish. But here's the deal. If Venonat puts Rhydon to sleep, I don't really care because sleeping Rhydon still beats Magneton, right? So it's like not a huge deal to let Rhydon get put to sleep. And now you, you figure Venonat might stun Spore in, in response to this. Um, I don't know. I don't really have anyone that wants to get stun Spored. And... But I guess I'll go Beedrill. Right, it gets stun spored. Like, okay, 
But now I can twin needle this Venonat and do tons of damage to it if Venonat stays in. If it decides to switch out, that's fine too. Maybe we poison something, which is not the best in Gen 1, but is okay. Gosh, is that really right that there's only that little chance of um, getting a ground type? I wonder if I counted wrong. Might have counted wrong. All right, Cubone comes out here. I think he's going to Seismic Toss, but we're going to take it anyway. He does Earthquake. So we have the speed advantage now. We hope that he switches out and we freeze whoever he switches into. That's our big hope. Freeze this king. Dang, okay. Uh, we'll try again to freeze him. Dang. Um, and now we'll explode. It was a turn early, but just in case of a critical hit, we wanted to protect that. Uh, it was in Cloister's a bummer, but because we had Blastoise in the back, we felt like it was okay. It wasn't terrible. Um... I'm not sure who he's going to send in now, but I want to see how much Magmar does to Venonat. It's not a guaranteed one-shot, but it's 51%, so I'm willing to roll those dice. I'll send out Magmar. My guess was Venonat because it's a status condition setter, and so can do a pretty good job of tanking one hit and stun sporing in retaliation. So I didn't mind that. Chansey comes out. We don't want to burn Chansey, so that's good that we didn't get one. Um, so Machop, I'm, I'm glad we didn't get him paralyzed earlier because uh, that's who I would like to use to finish off Chansey. But we'll go Beedrill and... I'm wondering if he might just go straight Cubone here. Like, he might, right? So should I just go Blastoise, expecting the Cubone? But then he just goes back to Chansey, right? So it's it, it's not really worth it to me. I think I just need to get some damage off on the Cubone. So I'm going to Sword Stance. This way, hopefully, his Cubone stays in, right? There's Cubone one shot my B drill. Um, sorry, I said one shot. Clearly, I meant two shot. It's a good chance to two shot me. Um, and but if we recover with this Mega Drain, it's a it's not a good chance to two shot us. So I think we can recover up once. Oh, a big time crit. Gotta love seeing that. Uh, and now double edge is probably our best bet. So we'll double edge. Uh, another crit. I guess we didn't need to use that swords dance after all. Um, but that's pretty good because it puts Cubone in range for Magmar's Fire Blast. And we just want to make sure that he is in that range. Um, I do kind of expect Chansey to come back out one more time, but if that happens, we go to Marowak, or we go to Machop, excuse me, and see what happens from there. I guess I'm not really being very aggressive in my play here. I'm being pretty relaxed about it. Um, and I don't know if I should be more aggressive with these prediction double switches. Um, like I said before, I was kind of thinking that double switching to Blastoise wasn't the best because then Chansey comes back out and I just wanted to do damage to the Cubone. That was really my hope. Um, Venonat comes out here and I'm going to go back to Magmar. He might stun Spore, which would be pretty good, but I think he's scared of the Machop, so I expect the Psychic. Great. And now Chansey at 78%, I don't think so, but I wonder if Body Slam and Hyper Beam can knock him out. Actually, it might Body Slam Hyper Beam get the knockout on Chansey. 
So risk it. Body slam does 29. If Chansey is at 49% health, it has 481. 481 times 0.49. I'm just doing a quick calculation, right? Because Pokemon can't recover if they have exactly 255 health left, but Chansey will have or if there's a difference of 255 between its starting and ending health, um, which I think happens at 47% for Chansey. So no chance that we're in that range. Um, here's the tough part. Do I play it safe? I'm taking too long, so I think Roy is going to expect what's going on. I'm going to use Confuse Ray. I'm worried that he's going to switch out. Oh, son of a gun. Oh, I cannot believe it. Oh, I just let him have that one. Gosh. The hyper beam would have knocked him out for sure. Oh, that's really sad. Um, the nice thing is we still have Blastoise, and Magmar can get this done against Venonat. So, and we don't really need Machop if this Chansey goes down. Um... So I guess we just stick with the body slamming. Son of a gun again. Okay. Um, now I guess we'll go confuse right here. And now I kind of expect the switch out. Um, because he's recovered so much health, he might want to save the chances. So I'm going to switch to Fire Blast and hope he switches out. He does not, and he gets the crit. And we missed the Fire Blast. Okay, time to go Machop. Man, that was a really bad exchange by us. We misread that so hard at every turn. Just straightforward Hyper Beam, and that was the end of this Chansey. Instead, uh, we are in t a world of hurt here. Um, a world of hurt here. Especially because if for some reason we have to lose the Rhydon, I think we lose the whole game. Because um, Magneton, with everything paralyzed and only Blastoise left, Blastoise would need a critical hit or a freeze to really have a chance here. So I don't know what chance he's going to do. The fact that it showed Thunderbolt means that it's Thunderbolt Ice Beam because it always has Ice Beam, I think. Um, and then its fourth move sometimes Singed, sometimes Seismic Toss. Uh, so we're really thinking about this one. And we're fully paralyzed again. Come on. Right when we needed it. Um, so Cubone comes out here. And now we kind of really have to freeze something. So he sees our last. We're in, we're in real bad shape here. I can't believe I didn't hyper beam that Chansey. I was just so sure... He was going to switch back to the Magneton, eat the Hyper Beam, and then... But it's so tough because Magmar doesn't even always carry Hyper Beam, right? So, like, even thinking that was was a little risky. Chansey's just going to go Thunderbolt here. Um, just, there's no reason to Thunder Wave. And we're going to have to get a little more aggressive now. There we go. And just try for the Freeze one more time. This is a back and forth that I don't think Roy minds too much, unless we do get the freeze, and then he'll mind it a lot. Um, I think I might Earthquake here. So it does 30th, like a critical hit Earthquake knocks him out. Dang. Nice, okay. So we've turned the tide a little bit. Um, surf, uh, it's Hydro Pump. Surf does not really get the job done against Chansey here. So I think we should Body Slam, which did get the job done, right? 26%, yep. 
So Body Slam gets the job done. Oh, and he stays in. Okay, new life for us. New life for us. Oh, there goes our life. Game over. Uh, okay. The problem is Machop can't do everything. The Machop does great work here. Yeah, we have blown this one on that Hyper Beam. If we Hyper Beamed and had an unparalyzed Magmar, we could have hoped that things would work out. But there's no hope now. I don't think there's any hope. Um, I guess what could happen is I switch to Magmar here. I'll let Magmar go down. And bring out Machop. What does Machop do to any of his things? Not much. He can safely go to Cubone here, and he will. And just let it go down, right? And we have to double switch. He's not going to risk Raichu. There's no way he'd risk Raichu here. Right, because Raichu just wins the game for him. The problem, though, is without needing Cubone anymore, he doesn't have to risk getting frozen on the switch. In. So that's the trouble. We go Ride on to eat this Thunderbolt into Machop to eat the Surf, I hope. And I'm just kind of hoping that Machop can live a Surf and a Thunderbolt. Oh, it definitely cannot. So, good one, Roy. You got us good. Ah. Uh, so that's two games against Roy and two kind of significant misplays for us. We missed the Hyper Beam on Chansey in this one. And last one, we missed the Switch to Ponyta on the first turn of Sleep. And both of those um, were game-costing mistakes where we lucked out in game one and then got owned in game two with that Raichu in the back. That was too bad. But here we are again. <laughs> game three. We've got a really fast team. Oh my goodness, this team is so fast. Uh, it's a shame that nothing can do anything to Victory Bell. So I'm actually thinking I'm going to go Jolteon and Pin Missile um, and see what happens. He goes Body Slam. Yeah, I'm just going to Jolteon Pin Missile this and see what happens. Um, I don't really have an answer to this Victory Bell. Okay, so he goes Rhyhorn. That's fine. That's fine with me. Um, because I'll go Polyrath, and then I get to decide, do I want to use Hypnosis or not? Uh, and I think I do. Now, Rhyhorn's a huge problem for us because we have Jolteon and Voltorb, so what we have to do in this match is sacrifice Jolteon kind of early so that he thinks it's okay to use Rhyhorn. If he doesn't lose Rhyhorn, we are in tons of trouble. We're in tons of trouble if he doesn't lose that Rhyhorn. Um, yeah, so sacrificing Jolteon early, I think, is going to be the play. The trouble is, to sacrifice Jolteon, it uh, might require the Rhyhorn to come in, and that might let him set up a substitute and it's not easy for us to break that substitute without losing something that we want to keep. Okay, but we get that. That's pretty good. Um, and he doesn't know if we're amnesia or not. So I guess we stay in here. I expect the victory bill to come back out. But we can body slam pretty safely. Oh, Blastoise comes out. Okay. He's got double water type, so no wonder he's willing to sacrifice. That seems all right. I'm going to go Jolteon here. Again, I could sacrifice Polyrath, but it seems better to let him stick around. Um, sacrifice Jolteon seems like the move. 
but uh, I think we're gonna double switch here. No. Well, I don't know. We could double switch, right? Expect the Rhyhorn to come back in. Um, because he knows the Polyrath doesn't know Amnesia, so he's not super scared of it, I think. Right? If Polyrath was an Amnesia user... Sorry, I'm, I'm thinking more than I'm saying. My thought is, if he goes to Rhyhorn here, it's safe, because if I go Polyrath, he can just go out to Kingler and let Kingler, you know, wake up or kind of wall this Polyrath. Polyrath were an amnesia user, he'd have a harder time doing that. So I do think going to Rhyhorn makes the most sense for him. And he does do it. Cool. So again, we'll try to get the paralysis off on Blastoise. We don't. And we'll let Jolteon go down. Okay. So now we kind of hope that he is um, more willing to let Rhyhorn go. Um, the thing that's tough here is that Kadabra makes the most sense for us. We risk Kadabra getting paralyzed with his body slam. It's only a 1 in 3 chance, but it's still a 1 in 3 chance, so it's still scary. Uh, we just failed twice though, so he can fail once and that would be okay. We'll just go for a big Psychic here. A lot of damage. Just big Psychic, a lot of damage here. That's our hope. Let's just get the crit. Let's just get the crit knockout. I believe in you, Kadabra. Yes! You believe in me too. We are in sync. I trained you up from that level 5 Abra I caught north of Cerulean City. You only knew teleport at the time. You were so scared. And I trained you upright. And I didn't even trade you to let you evolve. I kept you. And now my faith in you is rewarded. I feel loved. And I hope you do too. So thank you. Rhyhorn comes out now. And we'll go to Polyrath. We'll eat this earthquake up. Um, and do we surf here? Do we think he's ready to let Rhyhorn go? I'm not sure if he's ready to let Rhyhorn go or not. But I'll surf anyway. Kinglor came out. Okay. Uh, I guess I'll go Kadabra here. Hope that Kinglor stays asleep. He does. I'm going to set up a Reflect, which is risky because Kinglor could wake up, but he does not. And that Reflect will be good, because now Rhyhorn will have a harder time with Kadabra. Now Kingler has woken up, so Polyrath is ready to put something else to sleep, which could be nice. So, Arcanine comes out. That's fine with me. Just paralyze him. And he'll try to paralyze us back, and, and that's kind of okay, because... We have this Reflect up, so we're not too worried, even if we do get paralyzed. Uh, maybe we should be worried, because Victory Bell probably has Hyper Beam. And he might switch out here, I don't know. We could recover up here. But the critical hit threat from a speedy Arcanine is real, and so I'd rather just Psychic. Um, I'd rather just Psychic. Okay, now I'm going to recover. Hope that he doesn't get a crit. I'll recover one more time. Still hoping he gets no crit. Okay, he's brought Rhyhorn in. And that's... Not our favorite thing, but it's okay. That did 49%. So we might be able to live this second one. I don't know. I don't know if we can, but we might be able to.
I guess I'm playing real cavalier here. I don't know if I should be sacrificing this cadaver, right? Substitute's a real good move there, just in case. Uh, now, now I can th think a bit more, like, like go to Aerodactyl here kind of thing. Um, but let me just check out Earthquake and Reflect. Yeah, uh, there's a decent chance I live this. I don't have anything great for Victory Bell is the thing that I'm kind of worried about, I guess. But Polyrath is faster and can put it to sleep. Like, everything I have is faster than Victory Bell, right? So I shouldn't be that worried. Okay, he does get the knockout. Um, and so... Polyrath makes the most sense here. If he switches out the Victory Bell, then we can try to put him to sleep, right? But he doesn't, and he might be trying to play a Hypnosis game here. Like, if he has nothing faster than Polyrath, he could go Victory Bell and then switch out to Rhyhorn, hoping that we put Rhyhorn to sleep. But if he has nothing faster than Polyrath, then we just spam Hypnosis and we don't even care. But he does have Kangaskhan. Kangaskhan is faster than Polyrath. Um, but that's okay, because we have Aerodactyl here. And Aerodactyl's a champion. Aerodactyl knows Fire Blast, which can, I think, two-shot the two remaining. So it's a really good situation here where it can potentially burn this Kangaskhan. Um or just knock out anything that wants to switch in. So our speed is really, really showing off now. Uh, in fact, of our six Pokemon here, five of them were faster than his fastest Pokemon. And that's just, that's just a brutal matchup. So we have a big time advantage uh, just based on that alone. And he might be doing some calculations to see if Victory Bell can survive the double fire blast. Um, but I think I think if Aerodactyl just fire blasts a ton, we should be able Oh no. Aerodactyl, no. Don't do that. Don't miss. Aerodactyl! You are kidding me! Aerodactyl, you are kidding me! Oh my goodness gracious! That was so bad. That was so bad, Aerodactyl. Oh! What do I do now? Do I just lose now? Aerodactyl, I just needed some damage on this Kangaskhan so that Doug Trio could knock him out comfortably. Oh, Aerodactyl. Oh, you've let me down. I've got Voltorb here. I don't know what to do with Voltorb. Uh, I really don't know what to do with Voltorb here. If I double switch and get it right, I'm in good shape. And if I double switch and get it wrong, I'm in terrible shape. Then I'm going to double switch. Okay, now the question is, do I triple switch? And I don't... Because if Victory Bell comes out now, I could put it to sleep with Polyrath, right? But I don't know. That's risky. That's too risky. Darn! Oh, should have done it. Should have done it. Okay, so out comes Voltorb now. Takes this from Victory Bell. And I guess for Voltorb... Um, has he done his job? Do I still need him? Um, Victory Bell doesn't really fear Voltorb at all. 
So it, it even if it stays like I should just explode. What the heck is going on? I just don't understand these plays. Victorville had nothing to fear from Voltorb, right? So if I doubled, Victorville would have been sitting pretty with that razor leaf. And if I didn't double, Victorville would have just done tons of damage, maybe knocked out Voltorb. So I have no idea where that move came from. That that was crazy. Um, now we have to hope for critical hits. Uh, I think he should bring out Victory Bell, though. And we'll just say, again, we believe in you, Doug Trio. We found you as a Diglett in that Diglett's cave. And uh, you suck. Okay. Uh, so now we go Polyrath. And we lose. We lose this game. We could not convince him. Polyrath's body slam does 10 to... Oh, he's got Reflect. Does 21 to 24. So it might not knock him out. But we have to try it anyway. Um, yeah, we tried so hard to convince him to lose his Rhyhorn. And we just couldn't get it done. And we weren't courageous enough on the double switches. I need to use hypnosis and hope that he gets a 1 in 20, 256 miss. Oh, I'm sick about these games, man. First one we misplayed and lost. The second one we, or sorry, the first one we misplayed and won. The second one we misplayed and lost because of it. And the third one we. Lost again? I don't know. Those Aerodactyl misses really sunk us. Um, because if they hit... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can... Ah, oh, my goodness. I, I don't even know what to say about this set. I just feel bad leaving it. Um, but, uh... Roy, yeah, 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 Roy knows what's up, he's too good, he's been around too long to fall for all the doubles, um, but we tried to get him, so now we're in uh, the portion of the video where we get to add you to our table of edgy challengers, you are here, having gone two and one. Roizen. Nice job in this edgy challenge. Um, you know, I know because you didn't win all three, you're eligible for a rematch, but I kind of want the rematch here. I, uh, yeah, I don't feel good about that set. I don't know. You played great. I played fine. But I do not feel good about the set. So, anyway... Thanks for watching this edgy challenge. If you have other thoughts besides the one that I've been crying about this whole video, uh, let me know. Let me know how I could beat Roy next time we play. And I look forward to seeing you then.